Hello. In today's video, we're going to see how to replace a distributor. This is a 2000 Nissan Quest slash Mercury Villager. Uh, it has a little rough idle um, when it's still, but when it runs uh, at higher speeds, everything's fine up until recently. Now uh, we're getting some more. Uh, signals and codes. There's a knock sensor code which is pretty common for just about anything on this uh, particular vehicle. And then there's also some uh, miss, uh, cylinder miss codes. So uh, we've troubleshooted some of it, some of the equipment that's necessary to really truly troubleshoot the distributor I don't have. So, uh, so if you have troubleshot your problem and know it's a distributor, today you're going to see how to change it very quick and easily. Alright, here we see a close-up of the distributor. This entire unit is available for under two, under $300. Uh, that's new from your auto parts store. It's really retained by only one bolt. There's an electrical connection here. It looks like there is a second electrical connection here. And then we have to make sure to put all of these spark plug wires back in their correct orientation. We're gonna do that by taking the cap loose, setting it off to the side without taking the wires off. That'll also let us see the rotor because we're gonna to have to know which direction it's pointing. So when we put the new one in that it matches it exactly. We're also gonna scribe some marks here to make sure that our distributor is going to be reinstalled exactly the same. Uh, with respect to timing. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is remove the distributor cap. And even before that, we're going to disconnect the battery cables to make sure we don't have any electrical problems. All right, battery cables are disconnected. So now we will just lift this out of the way. And we can see that our rotor is pointed in the three o'clock position. Let me go grab a tool to scribe. All right, now I'm going to make a little scribe mark right here. That's going to show me exactly where the new distributor needs to line up. Rotor at 3 o'clock. All right, next step is to disconnect these electrical connectors. Always make these harder than they have to be. Right? There's a tab on the bottom of this one. This one. Okay, there we go. All right, we'll probably put a little dielectric grease on those connectors when we reinstall them. All that's left now is to loosen up the retaining bolt, timing bolt. All right, and now we will lift, hopefully, that distributor out without a problem. And there we go. All right, here is our new distributor. Looks exactly like the old one. We are gonna have to take this cap off so that we can see the position of the rotor and match that back up. I'm gonna look right now to see if the casting is the same. And it is 
also exactly the same. So, let's take that cap off and then we should be ready to install. Of course, they, they painted these so that they can know whether or not this has been touched. So now the question is, do we remember, do you remember, which way this rotor was facing? All right, I have to say that that's close, but doesn't quite look like three o'clock. So I'm gonna pull it back up. I think we're gonna go with that. Although it did appear to be a little bit further. Three o'clock-ish. So my scribe marks line up. done. A bit of dielectric grease across here. We'll keep this corrosion free. Believe it or not, that is all there is to it. We're gonna reconnect the battery and crank her up. All right, so battery is hooked back up. And we are ready to crank it up and take it for a test drive.
that's it. Proof is in the pudding. Uh, problem solved. Doesn't hesitate anymore when I'm sitting at a stop sign idling. And uh, no upper end hesitation. That was a new problem that developed. Uh, most likely due to the sensor that's inside the distributor. There's a little uh, crank shaft sensor. A lot of cars have that located on the crank shaft, but in this case it's on the distributor. And if that little optical sensor gets dirty, you can try to clean it out or whatnot. But um, although this is my hobby, I don't want to be uh, playing with cars all the time. So hopefully you found that video helpful. If you need to change your distributor, uh, make sure that's your problem because it's pretty pricey, around $250, $300. Um, and uh, it's fairly easy to do. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Don't forget our sponsors. They are the reason why videos like this are possible. And I'll see you next time.